Hey, my name is Jason Stith. Um, I am a structural engineer uh, working in Louisville. Uh, my world is designing bridges. The general job description for me is, is uh, as a structural engineer, and, and they kind of come in different areas. Uh, many people work in designing buildings or other structures. I, my particular expertise or work is in bridges. Uh, we are the ones that go through and try to size the members, size the structure, uh, in order to have a safe uh, passage for the general public. Uh, the public safety and welfare is our number one priority, uh, but then doing that economically. Uh, so you can make a member or a bridge as, uh, you know, as large as you could possibly make it, but it wouldn't be economical. And so a good part of our stuff is to make an economical structure that is safe for the traveling public. So my day in general uh, does vary a little bit. Um, the most part, my, my job is an office job. I work in an office, I work on a computer. Um, there are many components of that, but in the end product of what we're producing for, a, say, a design is a set of plans or a piece of paper. And today it's really an electronic file. Um, and the way we do that is we'll go through and determine loads. So for a bridge, uh, we're always looking at say, a load path. So we need to make sure that our bridge can hold up a truck. Cars really don't matter, we're looking at a semi-truck. Can we load the bridge fully with trucks? And then can our concrete deck that the truck is driving on sustain that load? And then underneath that we may have girders or other beams that carry the vehicle over the span. And we gotta make sure that that can carry the truck and the concrete deck that you're driving on. Underneath that you'll have piers, you design those piers to carry the truck, the deck, and the concrete girders that they're carrying all the way down to the foundations. The foundations have to be designed to carry the truck, the deck, the girders, and the piers. And so you can kind of see this kind of stepwise process. It's, it's like most problem solving, so you just kind of work through the process, uh, determining those loads and making sure that each member, each component has the capacity necessary uh, to safely carry those loads. So that's kind of one side of it. The other thing that I get to do and I really enjoy is bridge inspection. So uh, they're required that all bridges inspected every two years. And so one of the things we'll get to do is go out um, and specifically some of the larger bridges. I've been able to do quite a few of the large Ohio River bridges, um, the bridges in Brandenburg or in Louisville, all the, the three, three of the downtown Louisville bridges, including the New Abraham Lincoln. Uh, we'll go out, we'll climb on the bridges, uh, we'll walk through the girders and, and other components, checking to ensure the safety of those for the general public. And so that's not every day, obviously. Um, you know, those things come along, and, and, and maybe I would say I spend about, on average, about one day a week out of the office, whether it's that, whether it's looking at some of the construction projects we have ongoing um, and making sure that those are going well. For a starting civil engineer, or structural engineer, I should say, um, it's going to be in the, in, in the mid, uh, mid $50,000 range uh, coming out of college. Uh, with a master's degree, I would say. Most people in the structural engineering profession, at least in my world doing bridges, will have at least a master's degree in civil engineering, and, and that would be the general range. Your salary will then increase from there as you uh, progress in your career. Um, the way that um, you need to get there, um, again, is going through college. Uh, there are specific schools that are what they call ABET accreditation. Um, within the civil engineering world, and again, civil engineering is a little bit broader than structures, but it, it, it is most civil things. So there's water and wastewater, transportation engineering, uh, geotechnical engineering, all these are within the civil realm that deal with civil projects um, that help, you know, most of all of our, our cities and, um, and, and, and functionalities there of. Um, and again, so within that world, um, you would have to go to a four-year college ABET is, a, is an accreditation that allows you to become a professional engineer, very important within the civil engineering world. There are a few ABET accredited colleges within the state of Kentucky. They would include uh, the University of Louisville, the University of Kentucky, uh, and Western Kentucky University currently. Some of the other schools have partnerships where you can go a couple years at, say, Murray or Eastern and then transfer to one of those other three schools. But without graduating from one of those three, you aren't able to go after you graduate and become a professional engineer. Uh, which within the civil engineering world generally is pretty important for progression within your career as you go forward. I started out at the University of Kentucky. Um, I did a four-year degree in civil engineering um, and then continued on and got a master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Kentucky. At that point, um, I did do, uh, I was, did some uh, work experience both during school and then immediately following school, but at that point in time there were a few technical things 
that I wanted to know that I didn't fully understand. And I also wanted to be involved uh, more nationally with the development of the standards that govern the bridge design and the structural engineering world that I'm a part of. Uh, towards that end, I ended up furthering my education. I went to the University of Texas at Austin, uh, in Austin, Texas, and got a PhD in structural engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. And what that has allowed me to do, not, while it's not absolutely necessary, what it has allowed me to do professionally uh, is to get involved with some of the national organizations and, and committees that kind of drive and develop best practices. They develop the codes and the standards that are used nationally. Um, that has allowed me a lot of networking opportunities all across the country, staying abreast of all the latest developments within the field. Uh, and so it's been professionally very beneficial to me uh, to go that route. Again, not necessary that you would have to, but for me it's been very good professionally and uh, I think going forward will be very helpful. Earlier in my career, like I said, going back to say middle school and, and high school, um, you know, I, in middle school I started taking the algebra classes um, and, and moving forward in kind of the advanced math track. It was, I have an aptitude for math, that was something that I enjoyed doing um, and, as math and science are very heavy in the engineering world. Um, and so getting through the scholastic part, getting through school, uh, to become an engineer, those are very important. Uh, so I was able to do that. When I got into high school, I went straight into the Algebra II, the Geometry, took Calculus uh, while I was in high school, which was extremely beneficial to kind of get you started and, and, and through some of those classwork um, and had good education on that. Uh, the other side is, is the, the sciences, getting into physics, especially for uh, what I do, is, it, it deals with a lot of kind of the basic uh, Newtonian, Newton physics, um, and so having that in high school was helpful so that when you get to college, it's not hitting you cold. You have a good understanding um, and a good basis to build on as you move forward through school, and that's what we, if you wanted to get into engineering, that would be the best starter when you're in middle school and high school, is to make sure you take those more difficult science and math classes. I went to um, elementary school here at a, a, a Catholic elementary school at St. St. Bridget, uh, but then went over to, to James T. Alton uh, for middle school, and then after that I went to uh, Central Hardin High School and graduated from Central Hardin uh, in 2000. There are a lot of, of, of components that you, you'll take from any given class. You know, as, as you go through school, I know we've had some classes in, in, um, in presentation and, 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 and I had a business class, you know, that worked with PowerPoints and those type of things. One thing that I get to do, again, part of the um, of, 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 of my world I, I enjoy doing is going to conferences, giving presentations about our work and what we're doing, explaining to other people some of these things. So anytime you can get up, and while engineering, it's very, very important to be able to do the hard sciences, and that's necessary to get through school. When you get to your career, and especially as you progress through the career, the other, I would call them softer components, your presentation skills, your oral, verbal, written communication skills become extremely important. And so while as a student it was difficult for me, and it still is more difficult for me to work through the written communication and all those aspects of it, it's extremely important to continue to work on those, continue to improve those skills um, and make sure you understand that as a student it's very important because they are necessary. You do have to communicate ideas, you do have to be to deliver information and provide information to other people and that medium can be both in communication, it can be graphically, there's a lot of ways to do that but without being able to demonstrate and provide ideas whether it's within your business or outside you don't, you cannot demonstrate and cannot provide a product to other people that they can use. So a couple lessons I think, probably two of them that, that I think are really important. Uh, the first one came to me actually from uh, a, civics a civics teacher at Central Hardin, uh, Mr. Baldwin. This is 20 years ago, I kept up with him, I'm not sure where he's at. But one thing that he told us um, was that when you get into your company, wherever you're working, do the little things that nobody else wants to do. Now that can be as simple as making sure you change the printer paper or fill up the coffee in the morning. He said that when you do that and you go on vacation, people will notice that you're not there. And, and I'll take that a step further. Whenever you're in a project or doing something, do the part of the project that other people don't want to do. Uh, it not only makes you invaluable, but it also continues in your mind an idea that you'll do what's hard and you won't always take the easy path. And I think you'll be very successful in life if you continue to do those little things and, and that thing will kind of build on it. 
The second thing that I think is really important good advice that I would give to a, a younger person is that um, there's a lot of things in life that are very urgent and important. So when you get into the business, in my world, you have emails coming all the time, you have phone calls, and you have to answer those, you have to deal with those. But you can get bogged down in the very urgent, important things that are in front of you. But there's always gonna be a lot of very important things that you need to do that aren't urgent. And so for what happens for most people is that they'll continue to try to put out the fire and put out a fire and do all these very urgent, important things and forget the unurgent, important things. And, and a lot of the success or, or, or things that I've done in, significant in my career, I would say has to do with taking time, setting aside some of the urgent things, and doing important things, but that aren't urgent. Because it's so easy to procrastinate on those, you'll just keep pushing them off. But oftentimes you can help your productivity and do other things. If you are having to do the same task over and over, if you'll stop, make that task better, um, doing those unimportant, urgent things can be good. For me, it's very gratifying be able to drive on a bridge that I design. I mean, it's it, the, the physical appreciation that, that you can get, that, that gratitude from the job, when you can physically get out there and touch something that you conceived in your mind, you had it in your head, you got it on a piece of paper, you worked it all out, all the details, and then see it come to fruition is, is very gratifying. And I don't know if it's, if it's surprising, but, but it, is, it is something I think is very important for me. Um, the other thing I think most people would be surprised, you know, getting into this is, 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 you know, I have gotten the opportunity to, and there's several people in my company that, that get out and, um, and, and climbing on these bridges can be you know, kind of uh, exhilarating, maybe is the right word. Um, I was able to rappel down the towers of the new Abraham Lincoln Bridge. We were checking all the connections. So you have these large cables that come off the new bridge in Louisville. If you get a chance to drive up there, see it in the pictures. Uh, there's very large cables that come from the towers down and support the deck of the bridge and support the structure. And so we were checking the locations where they were coming into the towers. And so you would take a, a, a large rope and, and rappel down it um, and, and do some of those things. I don't know if that's surprising, but it's interesting and, and, and fun. So I think that's uh, uh, maybe something a little bit different than you would think of for an engineer, but something that that's a few of us do have the opportunity to do. The most important thing that a student would need to know to be successful in engineering is probably the same as in most professions. Uh, I would think it's, it's a, a dedication and hard work. Uh, you know, it's, um, sometimes school can be difficult. You go through your classes and there's a particular topic you don't understand at things and, and you just have to persevere. Um, there are resources out there and you'll find that you know, in your classes today you know, the, 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 the teachers want to help you. They want you to succeed. Uh, when you get to college, the professors are there to help you succeed. <clears throat> and when you get into your business and when you get to your career, there are going to be uh, people older than you that will mentor you and want you to succeed. Um, and you just need to find and seek those people out. If you can find the people, that'll help you. If you're struggling on something, find either a, a student, a coworker, um, a teacher, Ask them the questions, make sure you can find, and, and, and you really get to the right questions. If you can find these people to help you along, um, you know, you'll, you'll find that, that as you try to help yourself, people want to help you, uh, and I think you'll be very successful.